This is uh, section 3.3 .3 on the negative binomial distribution. And uh, first thing we're going to do is try and explain what this means. So imagine that um, you've got like a game where you pick beads out of a bag like this. And there's, um, let's say, five reds and there are three blue. Yeah, so the probability of picking a red is going to be five out of eight. And the probability of picking a uh, blue is three over eight. And let's say I want to find a probability. I want to uh, pick three reds. Um, what's the probability of picking three reds in um, 10 trials? So a trial is going to be taking a bead out of the bag and then returning it. Yeah, so the probability remains the same. So I pick three reds in 10 trials. Now, what does that mean? So here's my 10 trials here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. I want to pick three reds in those 10 trials. Well, that I definitely know that the last red has to be on the 10th trial because I'm picking 10 trials. Now, where could the other two be? Well, the other two could be here and here, with the other ones being yellow. Uh, the other two could be here and here, with the others being yellow. The others could be here and here. Yeah. Those other nine um, trials that I had, the two reds could be anywhere, here and here, for example. But the last one is fixed. So as these reds are moving around, these two reds from the nine that I've got left, how can I work out how many different ways there are of getting two reds, two successes, which would be uh, five over eight. So I want two successes in these nine, which means I must get um, seven failures. How can I work out how many different ways I can get two successes and seven failures? Well, by using NCR. Two successes from the nine. Okay. And then I want this success to happen at the end. This is basically the negative binomial distribution. So here's the, this gives us the number of ways here of basically putting two R's in here. Yeah, there's lots of different ways of putting two R's in there and there, two reds here and here. So that's what that bit does. The next bit of the formula that I've got here. This just tells me, right, I want two R's or two reds, which means that seven of them must be yellows. But then the last one's going to be a red. And this is, as I said, the negative binomial distribution. So the first thing is um, we don't have a special um, like PO for Poisson or B for binomial. So we're going to use NB to rep represent negative binomial. And the two parameters are R and P. R is the number of successes you want. Number of successes. Uh, in our example, it was two. P represents the probability of success. Probability of success. And in my example, the probability of success was five over eight. And what we also have is X. X is the number of trials for that number of successes to happen, the number of trials. And in our example, the number of trials was um, 10. But we wanted 
to make sure that we got three successes in 10 trials. Yeah. So how do we work out that probability? Well, let's have a look at what we did down here at the bottom. So the way that we write this is X is going to be the number of trials. So it's the probability of like 10 trials. What's the probability 10 trials you get this number of successes? Well, we did NCR. Now in R1, N was nine, which was one less than the number of trials. So X minus one, C, um, and then two was the, or it was one less than the uh, number of successes because I knew that I wanted one success to happen at the end. So that left two left. So number of successes minus one. Okay, I'm probably gonna have to rub this out to give me a bit of space. Now, what did we work out next? We worked out the number or the probability of success, which was P, and how many successes I wanted. Now, um, here I had two. Now I'm gonna do something, and I don't wanna change it in a minute. So that was one less than the total number of successes I wanted. Then how many failures did I want? Well, I wanted seven failures and that would be um, total number of trials minus the number of successes X minus R. And then I multiplied by that final success that I wanted. Now what we can do is actually put this bit and this bit together. And we end up with this nice little formula, or actually if we just change it. So actually this power here just becomes R rather than R minus one. And this is what we're gonna use to do our negative binomial questions. Now, sometimes you might find it easier just to maybe do a diagram like I've done down here and think about it um, in a sort of practical way, just work your way through it and you are able to get the answer. So we've got the answer here. I'll probably work this out in a minute without actually referring to the formula because I said, right, nine trials, success on the 10th, which is this bit here, so that left nine here where I wanted two successes. So I wanted to, I've got lots of different ways of picking out the two reds from the nine that were left. So in those nine, what did I want? I wanted two successes and I wanted seven failures. And we did that without reference to the formula. So when you do questions, you can also do it without the formula. So if I use the formula, I suppose um, the difference would be that this five over eight here would get combined with this here, and then that would be uh, power three. And you can see why, because I want three successes and X minus R, 10 minus three failures. So let's work out what this actually gives us. So um, I will do nine then shift and divide to get NCR. Nine shift divide two times by um, five over eight. I'll need to put that in bracket so I can give it a power um, to the power three, so I'm gonna cubed. And then times by, open bracket again, three over eight. And that's going to be to the power seven. And I get quite a small number here. So it's in standard form, so 9.1656 times 10 to the negative three. And as a decimal, four decimal places, 0 0.0, 0 
nine two that rounds to. Okay, so Philomena is practicing the piano scales. The probability she completes a scale correctly is 0 0.4, so there's a probability of success. And she needs to complete four scales correctly. So basically, that's the number of successes that we want. So part A, find the probability she completes her fourth correct scale on her 12th attempt. So this is a negative binomial where we want four successes and a probability of success is 0 0.4. And what we want to find is the probability that basically her last correct attempt or the number of uh, attempts is 12. Right, so what does that mean? So um, using the formula, or we could just think about this, um, she wants the last attempt to be correct. That means we're going to have 11 attempts where we want three to be correct. And uh, that means that so that 11C3 means out of the 11 that we've got left, the first 11 attempts, we, we've got the remaining three correct scales. So the 11C3 tells you the number of options. So we basically want um, three successes in those 11, which means that we need to have eight failures and then we want the success on the last attempt. Yeah, so you can use the formula, but if you're able to think about it like this, that might be more helpful. Yeah, just thinking about it logically. So if we do 11C3 uh, times by 0 0.4 to the power 3, or we could even do 0 0.4 to the power 4 because we've got those, that's in the formula times by 0 0.6 to the power 8 and we get 0, so I'm going to give it to four decimal places, 0 0.0709 because there's a 4 that comes after it. Okay, so it's part A. Part B. Find the probability she completes her fourth correct scale on her tenth attempt given that her first scale was correct. Okay, so this is slightly different, so we're going to use a different letter for this negative binomial. We still want four correct scales to happen, and the probability of success is um, four. Now, given that the first scale is already correct, we can almost ignore that and then say, right, okay, we're looking for the probability where now we've got nine trials okay because the first one is correct so uh, one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so what we already know this one here was already a success yeah she got that scale correct here okay so given that that's already right What's then the probability for these remaining ones here? That's why we've got x equal to 9. So if the first one is already correct, and we're only interested in the other 9, and we also know that the last scale here needs to be correct, what does that leave us with in the middle bit here? So this is the bit that can vary. This is the bit where we're going to use NCR. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We've got basically got eight left. So we've got eight to choose. And we want, now the first one is correct. The last scale is correct. So somewhere in between, we've got to get two correct somewhere. So it's going to be eight C2. And we want uh, two successes. We actually want three successes. Well, I'm not going to write it this way. I want two successes in the middle bit. 
and in that middle bit that means I want uh, six failures and then I want the success at the end so just like before if you use the formula you could have just put 0.4 to the power of 3 on that. so we'll work this out on our calculator so uh, 8 shift divide 2 times by 0.4 squared times by 0.6 power 6 times by 0.4 so I could have done 0.4 cubed that will match up with the formula and I get uh, 0.0836 and then it's 0, 07 so we can leave it there four decimal places as our answer so you should now be in the position where you can do exercise 3c on pages 1 and 2 so uh, just uh, uh, a recap here um, where we have x is the number of trials r is the number of successes uh, p is the probability of success Prob probability of success and uh, the formula so the probability of um, a certain number of trials so that'd be a probability of a certain number of trials is going to be uh, x minus 1 c r minus 1 times by probability of r successes and 1 the probability of the failures 1 minus p is x minus r now as i said when you do these questions you could just use the formula but if you can think about what the question means that may make it easier um, and actually you can then just work it out uh, normally